Hello everybody, this is the next video on middle games. This is going to be about breaking down the enemy defences and crashing through with your pawns. And the game I'm going to show you today was played a couple of years ago at the Women's Chess Olympiad 2014. And apol apologies for the pronunciation <laughs> of their names, but white oh, the white pieces was uh, Alda uh, Shabana, uh, Shabanaj, <laughs> and black was Fiona Mutesi. I believe, again, apologies for pronunciation, I'm probably saying their names completely wrong. But anyway, to, <laughs> moving on. Um, white played d4, and black played f5. So we have the Dutch defence here. It's quite a... Uh, sort of aggressive opening from black. It's a, it almost mirrors the Sicilian defence, but it's seen as less uh, less sound uh, than the Sicilian for black. C4 and E6. So there's a couple of Dutches that, that can result from this. This is a regular move. Uh, sometimes G6 and Bishop G7 can be played too, but this is uh, this is perfectly within theory. Knight f3, knight f6, g3, bishop e7, bishop g2, castles, castles. So here we have a position where both sides have castled kingside. Uh, and generally, a principle is if you uh, have castles on the same side as your opponent, uh, you don't usually attack on that side of the board with your pawns because it can leave your king weak. But here's an exception, because black will try and increase the pawn chain with pawns on usually e6, f5, and g4 sometimes, or sometimes black plays g5 trying to get f4 in, uh, and gains lots of space on the, queen's, on the king side, whereas white tries to gain space on the queen side and dominate the center. So it's an interesting fight ahead, but black plays c6. So this is an unusual move, but it's preparing for the next move coming up, which will lead us into the main line opening. Knight c3, and the move that is pretty much always played in this opening a stonewall Dutch. So the stonewall is uh, Black's idea of putting all of his or her, in this case her, central pawns on the light squares, so c6, d5, e6, f5. And that way, Black is aiming to uh, sort of block up the centre, uh, literally, quite literally, build a solid wall where white can't break through and uh, use greater development to her advantage, or sometimes his advantage. Uh, and also, uh, the idea is that even though white will be able to expand on the queen side, and black doesn't usually make many moves uh, on, with regards to queen side control, uh, the idea is that is less important because the king side attack will matter more as white's king is on the king side, so uh, defending against checkmate will take priority over any queen side operations. Now, that's black's idea. Block it up, continue with your plan. And what white is going to try and do is control, still control the centre uh, and challenge black's pawns. The one thing you have to do in this sort of opening when black is doing this kind of stonewalling is what you don't want to do is just completely control the dark squares and think, oh, okay, black's weakened the dark squares. I'll take control of them uh, and then I'll be able to win. Because what you need to do is you need to challenge black on the light squares. That's really important. If you can break down the wall slowly then the dark square weaknesses will remain and black's control of the light squares will eventually dissipate and black will be weak all over the board. So knight e5, infiltrating, it's 
putting a knight on a good square. And also, e5 is a weak dark square, so the knight's occupying it. But the nature of a knight is that whatever coloured square the knight is currently on, currently occupying, it's controlling squares of the other colour. So the knight, the dark squared knight on e5 is controlling lots of light squares in the centre and a little on the king side. So the game continues, knight bd7, pawn takes. So white has released the tension but is putting the question to black. If knight takes pawn, e4 would be a good move here. Uh, and that should break down black's uh, sort of blockage in the position. And white then, you, you use the space advantage and black's weak pawns, white should be better there. So black takes with the e pawn, uh, getting rid of her uh, backward pawn. So not, not a bad move. And there's still a good pawn chain, b7, c6, d5. So it's blocking white's bishop on g2, stopping it having a big impact. Bishop f4 was played. Queen e8, which is a common theme, controlling light squares. And sometimes the queen goes to h5, uh, and then knight g4 is played by black. So, you know, I know it's a crude threat of checkmate, but it can be uh, surprisingly effective positionally as well as tactically. And what white has done is sort of got black's pawns concentrated uh, on d5 and e4 sort of where that's where black's sort of defending and stopping white breaking through so if white could challenge the pawns with his own or her own pawns in this game sorry uh yeah uh yeah if white could challenge black's pawns then that would be uh she'd be able to break down black's blocking of the center so f3 is played and f3 prepares e4 so creating more tension don't just let black keep those pawns unchallenged in the center knight h5 was now played and i'm not so sure about this move i would probably have just played uh maybe maybe even knight takes knight to be honest but it is quite difficult in this position because uh, it's hard for black to complete her development. So white now increased the pressure just a little and actually swapped off with knight takes d7. After bishop takes, the reason for that was that the white bishop doesn't need to retreat anymore. It can occupy e5. And this is a good thing because... I'm going to do a video, a video in more detail on this, but White's bishop had difficulty finding anything useful to do because it was blocked in by the pawn on d4. And, it, yeah, it was just difficult for it to have a purpose. But here, if black offers the exchange, then white uh, will should at least take it because the bishop on e5, its quality isn't as good as black's pieces. So... Here, black played queen g6, again threatening things on the king side, putting a little bit of pressure on white, but white here didn't panic, she simply played queen b3. So again, more, uh, more pressure on the light squares, again challenging black's premise that black is going to easily control light squares. So it's targeting d5. You know, maybe that won't be a big deal just yet, but, but you wait, it can get very scary. And the immediate threat is, of course, b7. So black responds with b5, trying to set up a, a second sort of big stone wall on light squares on the queen side. And now white's able to play e4. So the pawn on d5 is pinned. And I think white would be perfectly happy if her opponent played f takes e4. After f takes e4, white is still targeting d5. And black center is starting to look pretty bad here. It wouldn't be a very good position. So instead, b4 was played. Knight e2. So losing a little bit of 
uh, pressure because the knight is no longer targeting the light squares in the center of the board. Now, the move played here isn't what I would have played. Uh, I'll go on to the game continuation, but what I would have done is reroute my knight from h5 to f6 because the knight on h5 isn't really doing a lot, and even if it's exchanged here, uh, I felt that the knight on h5 was almost uh, useless. It wasn't really even a piece. So white's bishop is far more useful than uh, black's knight, at least for the moment. So I would have done that, and it does defend light squares at the moment. A possible continuation is knight f4, queen moves back, exchange, and here, white can't, well, white could uh, take on d5, but I would then capture on d4 with check, and it, it could be a little complicated. So white would still have a very good game with e5. So white now has a protected passed pawn. Very good for endgames. Queen f7, and do a simple threat, why not? Rook fe1, threatening e6. Bishop e6. White's knight here is much better than black's bishop. And again, I'll do another. I'll do a video on opposite coloured bishops, which would result if white took. Uh, they're very drawish. I'll, I'll say more in another video. Uh, but yeah, the, because the position is blocked up, white's knight would be better than black's bishop, which loves open positions. So maybe just rook a c1, rook f c8, and to prevent black breaking with c5 and trying to advance on the queen side maybe let's just play queen a4 so there's a bit more uh, a few more sort of threats coming up here of um if something like c5 there's queen a6 would might be quite unpleasant attacking the bishop on e6 so now after say g5 knight d3 uh, would then stop any c5 breaks. So black would have a backward pawn, uh, white would have a protected passed pawn. So it's very unpleasant for black, I have to say, and I think white could he, could win this with good play. But, you know, I'm, I'm focusing a lot on the negatives here, but there are a few small positives where if the position does open up, maybe black could sacrifice a couple of pawns, and then the two bishops might be able to compensate for say a pawn deficit and black could have activity on the queen side as well as having space on the king side so there is still a bit of play left black isn't totally lost just yet going back that was not played in the game instead the move i really don't like is bishop e6 and now white can win a piece can you see how white wins a piece? I'll give you 10 seconds. Yeah, pawn takes f5, and white's opponent has to capture because there's a fork. Bishop takes, and now another fork, g4. So white has succeeded in capturing a piece here. Next move. But her opponent decided that she'll have a bit of compensation for it with two pawns for the piece. But, I mean, I don't, I doubt this was a blunder, but, you know, who knows? I, I wasn't there at the time, so I don't know what each player was thinking. But if this was a way of trying to gain compensation and uh, attack on the king's side, I feel like it falls short here after knight g3 very good move played and black really doesn't have a lot to do uh she took on g3 because the knight on h5 isn't a very good attacker but the knight on g3 is a good defender and white now calmly transfers the queen over to g3 and offers the trade and <laughs> what's very unpleasant is that if the black queen moves away to say e6 White wins instantly with queen takes g7. So queen takes queen, pawn takes queen. 
And although Black has two pawns for the piece, she can't really use those pawns very well. The two against one on the king's side isn't really enough, and the extra bishop should be able to halt the pawns in their tracks. And the extra pawn on the queen's side is a, is a backward pawn, so that's going to be very hard to get moving. Just to show the ending of this game, because again it focuses on uh, challenging black on the light squares. Bishop g5, king h2 just to stop any checks, a5, bishop h3. So using the extra piece. The bishop on e5 is about as good as it can get, but the bishop on g2 is hitting a, a brick wall on c6 and d5. So go behind the pawns and around them to attack them. h6 was played. Bishop d7. And now it is completely lost for black, but black does blunder and play rook a6. So what did white play to make her opponent resign here? Yeah, bishop e6, check, winning the rook. And just for your own uh, amusement, this actually, according to the computer, is a mate in 11. So just to show you quickly, king h7. This is the best line for black, uh, apparently. Um, delaying checkmate as long as possible. Rook takes. Bishop f6. Check. 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 And here, rook 1, f5 is a potential checkmating threat uh, after, say, king h3. So, c5, rook takes, takes, king h3, rook back, and black can't stop rook on f1 to f5, check, mate. So... That was that was the game. Just to briefly go over the early middle game. Black starts off with the Dutch going into a stone wall Dutch. Defensive and a very uh, resilient um, way of going for things. It, it really is a solid line and there's tons of theory on the ways white can play against it but the ma the main uh, the main sort of line of thought is that white does need to challenge those pawns and the earlier the better really because white's development is so much more fluid and coordinated and blacks has, having a real trouble getting uh, their pieces out so yeah 95's great take and then challenge black on the light squares. Use your pawns as a battering ram to break down the wall. And don't mind a few exchanges if they benefit you. Don't shy away from them if you gain something. Just remember that in a lot of openings and middle games, the pawn structure is so important. And white's pawns are pretty good. Uh, and black pawns on the on the surface they're pretty good, but they're not fluid. They can't really move much. And when your pawns are sort of unable to have a bit of uh, a bit of fluidity, you know, they're unable to uh, maybe occasionally move a little or do any pawn breaks. Uh, they just become big targets for your opponent. White pawns here they have fluidity. They could white could play pawn f four could play later pawn g4 <laughs> in the right circumstances. I don't know why you would, but it's possible. Could play e4, could play a3, b4, could play b3, a4. Uh, and there's so many other things, but most of black's pawn moves are just horribly weakening. So, like b5, we can c6. And then we have the battering ram. And reduce the pressure. Black uh, makes an er has an error here. Makes a, a mistake in a judgment. I think she judged that she'd have more of a kingside attack. 
Uh, and then and then G4, as I just mentioned, does become a possibility. Uh, and then after this, it's just a simple case of swapping off and using the extra piece to your advantage to, again, target Black's uh, weak pawns that, that can't really move. They're just fixed targets to go after. So I hope you got something from this video and uh, how to and uh, got tips on how to break down a stubborn defense with a, uh, a pawn shield. Use your own pawns as battering rams against, against your opponent's shield. And comment, question, uh, comment, like, subscribe, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.